every analog input and output device should have a display on it like this. Josh Fergus from LinkedIn sent me this ODOT automation I.O. module, and I'll have to say I am very impressed with it. They have an EDS file that makes it super simple to drop it into the I.O. configuration of Studio 5000, and most importantly, it gives you the 4 to 20 million value of your analog signal. And this is something that I go through every day with people on our analog simulator is how to measure a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. Let's go through how to set it up. If we're adding a device over ethernet, we typically right click, new module, and then in here we type the model number, which in this case, this one starts with a BN and we get nothing. And so we're gonna have to add the EDS file. And you can get them online, but I've already downloaded it. So we're gonna go to Tools and then EDS Hardware Installation Tool. And then we're gonna register an EDS file, Next. And then I'm gonna do a single EDS file and I'm gonna Browse. And I'm gonna go to the location of it and right there it is. Next, Next, Next. And just keep going through it. It's pretty intuitive and finish. Now, if we right click Ethernet, new module, we can type BN and there it is. And I'm gonna call this our ODOT analog and we need to know its IP address. And one cool thing is yes, it does work with our SIM IPE, but also you can scroll through this. And I'm not gonna zoom in right now, but it's 192.168.19. So I'll enter that. Then we're gonna to need to go to this module definition and we're gonna select our connection and it's gonna be the exclusive owner. And using their configuration software, which we'll talk about in another video, I know the size is nine and eight. We'll click okay. And we're ready to close that out. And now if we go to controller tags, we're going to have O dot analog colon I and O dot analog colon O. And yes, I had a wardrobe change. I'm running a class this week. But now that we have that, we're going to need to do some scaling to it. If we open up the O dot analog colon I and then open up the data, you see that they're in single integers. And our first analog value is actually in zero and one. So we're gonna to need to combine them. And that's actually a lot easier than you would expect. We're gonna use a copy instruction. I'm just gonna type COP, enter. And then our source is gonna be O dot analog colon I data zero. Then I'm gonna copy it to analog combine. And the length is gonna be one because it's based off the destination. So I'm gonna right click this, new, and I'm gonna keep it as a double integer because two single integers make a double integer. And now we're gonna scale this. Now I like doing the scale in either function block or structured text. So I'm gonna right click the main program, add new routine. This will be my scaling and it will be a function block diagram. And while we're at it in our ladder, I'm just gonna click on this end and type JSR for our jump subroutine, and we are gonna to jump to the scaling. And now, if we open up that function block, we're going to go to our process tab and bring down the SCL instruction. And we'll bring down input and an output, and we'll put some connectors in here. And so our input is gonna be that analog combine and our output is gonna be analog scale. I'm gonna make the analog scale a real number. That way we have a decimal place in it. And we're gonna click the dialog box here. And this is gonna take our raw units and turn them into our engineering units. Now my engineering units are gonna be four and 20. And then our raw units, this goes from zero to 27648. And we'll click OK. And now I'm going to download that. And if you need any help downloading your program or anything like that, or went too fast or anything like that, we have lessons on all of that. 
I have our analog simulator connected to the ODOT, and their documentation was really clear on that. I'm going to go into current source mode, and we're going to start out at 20 here. And yeah, we're showing 20 there. And I can bring it down, and we can see it matches up nicely with that. So I'll just stop here at 12, and we're at 12.01. Now, if you don't have a display, or even if you do, you still need to know a little bit about troubleshooting analog signals. So I've created this playlist to help you out.